Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today's episode is going to be a $50 deck tech. When I say $50, I mean that is an overall deck cost. Both shipping and commanders that are $10 or less are going to be included in that cost, but basic lands will not be. Decks on this channel are built to be fun, inexpensive, and focused. If you want to learn more about what a focused commander deck is, check out this video here. On this deck tech, I'm going to take you through its strategy, the tactics, and how this deck wins. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. And while you're at it, subscribe and review our podcast as well. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. Today's episode is actually a patron-selected deck tech. Once a month, patrons vote on what commander that they'd like to see in an upcoming episode. Whatever commander gets the most votes, wins. And the commander that they chose was Marin of Clan El Toth. Marin is a 3-4 human shaman that costs 2 black green. She has whenever another creature you control dies, you get an experience counter. And then at the beginning of your end step, choose target creature card in your graveyard. If that card's converted mana cost is less than or equal to the number of experience counters you have, return to the battlefield otherwise put in your hand. So basically, Marin cares a whole lot about our creatures dying. The more of our creatures that die, the more experience counters we get, and the bigger creatures that we get into play for free. Marin is a value engine that can be really hard to stop once she gets going. And keep in mind that since Marin's cost is currently over $10, this is a commander cost excluded episode. So what's our strategy with this deck? We're going to increase our experience counters quickly by sacrificing creatures. Not only are we going to have some sacrifice outlets, but we also have some creatures that can actually just sacrifice themselves. And then how do we win with this deck? Well, we're going to outvalue our opponents by reanimating some powerful ETBs. By sacrificing and getting back some creatures over and over again, we can really take over the game. As with all Commander's Quarters decks, I'm going to take you through 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how we're going to win with it. So let's start things off with tactic number one, Harvest Season. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bobble, which we can pay two and tap and sacrifice to get a base land into play tapped. Next up, there's Search for Tomorrow, which is a fantastic turn one play. It's got to spend two for a green, and it's going to get us a basic land into play untapped. And then Rampant Growth is going to get us a base land into play tapped, and Farseek gets us a swamp into play tapped. Next up, we've got three creatures that can sacrifice themselves with Sakur Tribe Elder, Dildon Farmhand, and Crows and Wayfarer. Sakur Tribe Elder can get us a base into play tapped, and so can Dildon Farmhand, but we have to pay one and a green. Crows and Wayfarer we can also sacrifice for free, and it gets us a land from our hand into play. And then we've got some more creatures that can hit our graveyard with Dawn Trader Elk, Yavmai Granger, and Fertile It. Dawn Trader Elk we can sacrifice for a green to get a base skin to play tapped. Yavmai Granger gets to a base skin to play tapped when it comes into play, and it's got Echo, so we can choose not to pay that and sacrifice it. And then Fertile It comes into play with two plus one plus one counters on it, and by paying one in a green, we can move one from it to get a base land to play tapped. Next up, there's Verde Emissary and Primal Druid, which both when they die, they get us a base land into play tapped. And then there's From Beyond, which has, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a 1-1 Colossal Eldrazi Scion creature token onto the battlefield it has, sacrifice this creature, add colors to your mana pool. So essentially this gives us Sacrifice Fodder and Temporary Ramp too. But outside of getting experience counters, we've got other ways to benefit from our creatures dying. So now it's time for us to move on to tactic number two, Reap and Sow. First up there's Grim Horror Specs, which has, whenever another non-token creature you control dies, draw a card. And then Midnight Reaper is similar, but it says, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, Midnight Reaper deals one damage to you and you draw a card. In Commander, though, one damage per card is well worth it. And then Harvester of Souls says whenever another non-token creature dies, you may draw a card. So not only does this count our non-token creatures, but it also counts our opponent's non-token creatures, too. Next up, we've got three cards that actually count tokens as well, with Smothering Abomination, Death Reap Ritual, and Moldervine Reclamation. Smothering Abomination has, at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature, and whenever you sacrifice a creature, draw a card. Again, with this deck, sacrificing creatures is actually a good thing for us. Death Reap Ritual has Morbid. At the beginning of each end step, if a creature died this turn, you may draw a card. And Moldervine Reclamation says whenever a creature you control dies, you gain one life and draw a card. But outside of drawing cards, we've got some other ways to gain value too with Shadows of the Past and Catacomb Sifter. Shadows of the Past says whenever a creature dies, scry one, and by paying four and a black, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life, but activate this ability only if there are four more creature cards in your graveyard. And then Catacomb Sifter comes into play with an Eldrazi sign, and it also has whenever another creature you control dies, scry one. Now scrying isn't card advantage, but it is card selection, and that can come in huge. But finally, we've got some more ways to draw with Wall of Blossoms, Read the Bones, and Moonlight Bargain. When Wall of Blossoms comes into play, we draw a card. Read the Bones has us scry two, draw two cards, and lose two life. And then Moonlight Bargain says, look at the top five cards of your library. For each card, put that card into your graveyard unless you pay two life, then put the rest into your hand. 
So this can help us get the right cards into our hand for some life and also get the right cards into our graveyard too. Now some of these cards gave us some great value from our creatures dying and we're not quite done with that kind of value just yet. So now let's move on to tactic number three, preparations. First set this Golgari Germination when Chaz, whenever another non-token creature you control dies, create a 1-1 green sapling creature tokens. And then open the graves as the exact same thing, but it makes us a 2-2 black zombie instead. Then there's Gutter Grind, which says whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put a slime counter on Gutter Grind, then put a green ooze creature token onto the battlefield with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of slime counters on Gutter Grind. So the more non-token creatures that we have die, the more slimes we get, and the bigger they get too. Now these cards essentially all provide a great amount of value for this deck, but still the Golden Pig provides even more value. And the Golden Pig is going to be our number one card out of our 99. And the Golden Pig for this deck is Trionic Resonator. It's an artifact that costs two and it has paid two and tap it. Copy target triggered ability you control, you may choose new targets for the copy. This is an extremely flexible card that can be used in a ton of ways for this deck. First off, this can copy our commander's trigger to get us an extra experience counter. This can help us build up our experience counters quicker to help us get bigger and bigger things out of our yard. But this can even copy our commander's end step trigger to get us an extra creature out of our yard. That essentially doubles our commander's value for just two mana each turn. Or if we've got an extremely powerful ETB, we can just copy that ETB with this as well. This card can be used in a variety of ways for this deck that are all extremely powerful, and that's why it's the Golden Pig. But how do we actually ensure that we get those right creatures into our graveyard? Let's find out in tactic number four, Hide and Seek. First up, there's Buried Alive, which says, search your library for up to three creature cards, put them into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. This is a fantastic card that can help us get a ton of powerful effects for our commander to reanimate. But we've also got Gerard's Orders and Final Parting, which can help us out too. Jaron's Order says, search your library for up to two creature cards and reveal them, put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. And Final Parting does the exact same thing, but they don't have to be creature cards, they can be any cards. Getting the right card into our hand and the right card into our graveyard is a very powerful thing. And finally, we even have a creature that can help us out with this as well. When Corpse Connoisseur enters the battlefield, we can search our library for a creature card and put that card into our graveyard. If we do, we shuffle our library. And on top of that, Corpse Connoisseur has unearthed for three and a black, so we can get some extra value out of it too. Now, outside of creatures that can sacrifice themselves, we need some other ways to sacrifice creatures that can't do that. So now it's time for us to move on to tactic number five, Sacrifices. First up, there's Altar of Dimension, which is a fantastic sacrifice outlet for this deck. It says, sacrifice a creature, target player puts a number of cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power from the top of their library into their graveyard. So not only is this a free sacrifice outlet, but it can also mill us too. And then there's Dark Privilege, which says, enchanted creature gets plus one plus one, and it also adds sacrifice a creature, regenerate enchanted creature. So this is a free sacrifice out that can also help us protect our commander too. Next up there's Evolutionary Leap, which isn't free, but is still very effective. By paying a green to sacrifice a creature, we reveal cards from the top of our library until we reveal a creature card. We put that card into our hand and the rest on the bottom of our library in a random order. So this can get us a ton of value on top of allowing us to sacrifice creatures for cheap. And then we've got two creatures that can help us out too with Woe Strider and Demir Houseguard. When Woe Strider enters the battlefield, we get a 0-1 goat creature token and it also has sacrifice another creature, scry one. On top of that, it has Escape for 3 black black by exiling 4 of the cards from our graveyard, and it comes into play with 2 plus plus 1 counters on it when we escape it. And then Demir Houseguard has Sacrifice a Creature, Regenerate Demir Houseguard, and it's got Transmute for 1 black black. So essentially, we can transmute it to Tutor for any card that has a converted mana cost of 4. Finally, we're running Victimize, which says, Choose 2 target creatures in your graveyard, Sacrifice a Creature. If you do, return those creatures to the battlefield tapped. So this can give us a ton of value for sacrificing a creature that we probably already want to sacrifice. Now, since we're having fun sacrificing a lot of things, we want to make sure that our opponents can have fun sacrificing their things, too. So it's time for us to move on to tactic number six, Must Be Made. First up, there's Fleshbag Marauder, Merciless Executioner, and Slum Reacher, each of which do the exact same thing. When they come into play, each player has to sacrifice a creature. And because we can choose to sacrifice them and we can keep getting them back with our commander, this can be problematic for our opponents. An even more problematic one might be Plague Crafter, which has, when it enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature or Planeswalker, each player who can't discards a card. Next up, there's Butcher of Malakir, which can be extremely brutal with a deck like this. It says, whenever Butcher of Malakir or another creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. With this in play, it's going to be very hard for our opponents to keep anything on the board. And finally, Saver Queen of the Golgari can also be especially brutal with this deck. She has, whenever you sacrifice a black creature, you may pay two life. If you do, each other player sacrifices a creature. And whenever you sacrifice a green creature, you may gain two life. But outside of making our opponents sacrifice things, we've got some target removal too. So now it's time for us to move on to tactic number seven, target practice. First up there's Shriek Maw, which when it comes into play, we destroy a target non-artifact, non-black creature, and it's got a Vogue for one in a black. Next up there's Shadowborn Demon, which has, when it enters the battlefield, destroy a target non-demon creature, and at the beginning of your upkeep, if there are fewer than six creature cards in your graveyard, sacrifice a creature. Again, sacrificing creatures is actually a good thing for this deck, so we're not going to be upset when we have to do so. And finally, we've got three creatures that can help us out with artifacts and enchantments with Caustic Caterpillar, Viridian Zealot, and Thrashing Brontodon. 
By paying one in a green, we can sacrifice cost of Caterpillar or Viridian Zealot to destroy target artifact or enchantment, and Thrashing Brontodon can do the same for one. Now, even though we're fine with sacrificing a ton of things, there are still some key pieces for us to protect. So now let's move on to attack number eight, safe and sound. First up, there's Rapid Vigor, which is going to regenerate each creature we control. Golgari Charm can do the exact same thing, or we can choose to make all creatures get minus one, minus one till end of turn, or can destroy target enchantment. And then Gift of Doom, we can play as a morph, and then we can sacrifice a creature to morph it. It's an aura that says enchant creature, enchanted creature has death touch and indestructible. So most of the time, we'll use this to protect our commander to keep our value engine going. And finally, we've got a way to protect ourselves with Spore Frog. Spore Frog has Sacrifice Spore Frog, prevent all combat damage to be dealt this turn. A fog effect that we can keep getting back over and over again can be very detrimental to our opponents. Now, protecting ourselves is great, but how do we actually finish our opponents off? Let's go through some ways in tactic number 9. Here comes the boom. First up, there's a Zoni Thousand Eye, which has, when it enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 black and green insect creature token for each creature card in your graveyard. And by paying black, green, and sacrificing another creature, we gain one life and draw a card. And then Abhorrent Overlord can also make us a ton of tokens it has, when it enters the battlefield, put a number of 1 1 black harpy creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield equal to your devotion to black. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. So both these can make a ton of tokens and help us sacrifice creatures too. But a creature that has an ETB that might provide us even more value is Sepulchral Primordial. It has when it enters the battlefield for each opponent, you may put up to one target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Again, if we can sacrifice this and get its effect over and over again, we can really take over a game quickly. But perhaps the deadliest ETB comes from Grey Merchant of Asphodel, otherwise known as Gary. When Gary enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life for X is our devotion to black, and we gain life equal to life lost this way. So this can help us drain our opponents out very quickly and help us stabilize by gaining a ton of life. But outside of Gary, we've got some other ways to drain our opponents as well. So it's time for us to move on to our final tactic, tactic number 10, down the drain. First up, there's Zulaport Cutthroat, which has whenever it or another creature we control dies, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life. And then Vindictive Vampire says when another creature you control dies, Vindictive Vampire deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. And then Falcon Wrath Noble says whenever it or another creature dies, target player loses one life and we gain one life. Next up, there's Poison Tip Archer, which says whenever another creature dies, each opponent loses one life. But perhaps the best of these effects comes from Sir Conrad the Grim. He has, whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. And by paying one into black, each player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. Again, this deck can be very resilient, extremely deadly, and hard to stop once it gets going. But now that we've gone through the spells in this deck, let's go on to the mana base. First up, we've got Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, both of which we can tap and sacrifice to get a base land and put into play tapped. Next up, we've got two lands that can actually ramp us with Mirrored Landscape and Blighted Woodland. Next up, there's Grim Backwitch, which we can tap for our colors, so we can pay two black green and tap and sacrifice a creature to draw a card. And then we're running one of the Vivid Lands with Vivid Grove. Next up, we've got three lands that come into play tapped and tap for either a black or green mana. Next up, we're running our Bounce Land with Golgari Rot Farm. And finally, we're going to be running 26 basics, 14 of those are going to be a Swamp, and 12 will be a Forest. And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG Player Optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average Marin EDH rack deck is going to set you back $371.19. Our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in at $49.50. And again, just a quick note, keep in mind that the commander cost is excluded for both these costs. Again, the price of this deck is the price that I got for it on the day that I'm recording. If you want to see a breakdown of this deck's cost, check out the link in the description. Keep in mind that prices can and will fluctuate and change over time. But with these deck costs, I want to be as transparent as I possibly can. Again, Commander's Quarters decks are about to be tuned and focused within their budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. So let's go through some reasonable upgrades now to see what some of those ways just might be. First up, let's add in Sadisi Undead Vizier by taking out Golgari Germination. Next up, let's add in Protean Hulk by taking out Falconrath Noble. And then let's add in Pillow Splendor by taking out From Beyond. Next up, let's add in Pond of Ulamog by taking out Gutter Grime. And then let's add in Dictative Erebus by taking out Catacomb Sifter. Finally, let's add in Dark Prophecy by taking out Shadows of the Past. And now it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what you think about this deck and what you think about the commander in general. And make sure you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons who helped make this show possible. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. If you want to support this channel directly, consider becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tax. There are even tiers where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. You can check out all the Patreon tiers and rewards at patreon.com slash commanders quarters. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one.